I think Nicola Sturgeon's strongest asset is uh, sheer hard work and, and discipline uh, in terms of developing and delivering a political message. Um, she's razor sharp, uh, knows how to pitch something uh, in a way that the average punter, the average voter can grasp and, uh, and understand. And she'll repeat it again and again, and it always sounds fresh and interesting and, and insightful when, in fact, she's saying the same thing over and over uh, again. I think her, her biggest achievement is to become leader of her party and First Minister of Scotland without uh, what one would traditionally associate with that climb. There's very little evidence of, of backstabbing or scheming or Machiavellian uh, behaviour that you'd expect from someone who, who's got to the top of, of his or her party, but that's what Nicola Sturgeon's managed. Obviously, Nicola Sturgeon and Alex Salmond have been a, a strong leadership duo for the past um, 10 years. On balance, actually, I think that Nicola Sturgeon is the stronger politician. I say that because I think she's more of a, an all-rounder. Uh, she has um, all of his strengths and, and relatively few of his, his faults. He's a very occasionally ill-disciplined politician who likes to shoot from the hip, which often causes trouble, uh, but strategically very strong. Nicola Sturgeon is ultra-cautious, very disciplined, very well prepared, and strategically sharp, but perhaps not as strongly as her predecessor. I think if, she, if Nicola Sturgeon has a, a weakness, it's, it reflects actually to an extent her background as a lawyer. She has this capacity to absorb a brief and breathe life into it. But at the same time, she can convince herself that something is, is correct, even when there's lots of evidence to the, the contrary. So for example, it, she identifies free tuition fees as as the absolute basis of her political uh, philosophy. But in Scotland, there's lots of evidence that it's not done what it was supposed to do, which was to increase access for, for children from poorer backgrounds. Ironically, the evidence shows that in England, which has a system of fees, uh, they've made more progress in that respect. But very little can convince Nicola Sturgeon that she could be wrong on, on any point. And sure, that is a a common feature of politicians in general, but I think that's a weakness when it comes to the First Minister. At points, Alex Salmond has come across as a, a backseat driver, um, and then he, he falls strangely quiet. It was always going to be difficult for such a big figure and someone who relishes politics so much uh, to take a back seat and not be involved uh, from, from day to day. Um, but at the same time, there is a, a, a professional relationship there with Nicola Sturgeon. It's worked for the past 10 years, and there's no reason to suspect it won't carry on working. Although I think at times, Alex Salmond will, will misbehave, he'll speak out of turn, and undoubtedly frustrate a successor, although she'll never uh, say as much in public. I think for the Scottish Labour Party, Jim Murphy was the only credible leader, leadership candidate at the end of last year. Uh, he's been incredibly in, in energetic since, uh, uh, triangulating like crazy, uh, cultivating uh, the media, uh, rewriting the Scottish Labour Party's constitution, uh, and generally doing everything right. In any normal circumstances, it would be having an effect and he would be seen as a, as a good leader. But these are not normal circumstances. And despite everything Jim Murphy has done, it's had no impact on the opinion polls. It's always difficult uh, pointing to rising stars in politics because inevitably they, they don't rise or they stop rising and start falling. But I think uh, from each of the parties, uh, the Scottish Labour Party's dep deputy leader, the leader in the Scottish Parliament, Kezia Dugdale, is one to watch, as is Jenny Mara, another uh, young uh, Labour front bencher. Uh, in the Conservative Party, Gavin Brown, uh, their finance spokesman, is a very effective uh, performer. Um, in the SNP, there are lots of people, but Hamza Youssef, who's, a, who's Minister for External Affairs at the moment, is spoken of as, a, as a, a future leader. And very difficult in the Liberal Democrats, they only have five MSPs and they're likely to have even fewer next year.